Alright, just want to show you a quick uh, project and this is the CD-ROM drive motor okay, which is like an old CD-ROM drive player I've already taken this one apart um, so you would have to take it apart to What I want to show you now is the useful parts in here Right, where the head slides up and down you've got two rods either side Now these rods are 3 mils in thickness okay um, now I extracted these two rods for parts because these rods are quite handy because in the centre of this motor there's a little recess. Now these rods will fit in the centre of the roads in, in the centre of the recess and they're a perfect fit because they're the same size as the actual shaft in the actual motor. Probably can't see with the camera. Now that part's important because that helped me to find a way to mount a propeller on one of the motors. Okay, this motor isn't dead identical but it's very similar out of a different unit. But um, just to compare the, the two, I'll just show you there. Now, so I mounted that rod in the centre and I super glued it into this piece here, which on this motor is there. Now after gluing that, I measured it with a propeller, just slipped the propeller on and I cut it just a little bit above the propeller. Now back to how I mounted it, after putting the shaft in and gluing it to the head of this, which is that shaft here remember, I used a control, uh, used one of the, oh, sorry I had a couple of servos and I used the control arm off the servo. In the servo kit, you normally get little round ones and long ones and star shaped ones. Well, I used just a cross, just one straight piece. I drilled the hole in the centre of the servo to 3mm, slid it on the shaft, and then I super glued it at the end. So that is fixed. That is actually fixed to the actual motor housing. Right. Then, when that all set, I got a rubber band, slipped the propeller on and put a little rubber band round to hold the propeller. So that would act as a prop saver. So it will spin the propeller, but if it strikes the ground, it will snap the rubber band and save the propeller from breaking. Hopefully. It doesn't always work, but it works most times. Right, okay, I've probably skipped a few steps there. Now, the step I've skipped is actually taking the motor, the motor off the metal bracket which um, I can't really show you because I've already done it this one here has screws on which is really easy it will just come apart but this one here didn't have no screws on so the centre piece there was all there was and that was like pressed into this plate on this one here so I had to carefully try and press it off without damaging the motor. Having said that, um, I disconnected the solder before I actually did that. Disconnect the three connections. Then pushed it off and then I was left with the three connections out, which I soldered some wires on. And then I put it on a speed controller, which I already had off uh, an old RC plane. Now this speed controller I've got is a 20 amp. But I think 10 amp would probably be sufficient for this type small motor. Ignore these bits here, these are just pieces of bamboo just to hold the wires in to get a nice tight connection. Because um, I haven't got any more of the proper plugs. Okay, now on here I have a, a receiver and there I have a 2.4 controller. So the receiver to receive the signal from the controller to control the speed controller. So here I have the, um, I can't remember if these are called T connectors, but uh, if they're not, somebody correct me, but I'll just call it a T connector for this purpose. Now, I've got a 7.2 volt battery, 900 oh. milliamp. And off she goes. It's got quite a, bit, quite a little bit of power. 
But then I've got a second battery, which I'll show you a little bit more power, which is 11 volt. I'm trying not to strike my hands here. I'm just going to take this battery out, it's heavy. Just see if I can push this container along. And I've lost. Oh, if you get that for me, please, Toya. Toya's my daughter. Thank you very much. Okay. Turn that off. I'm going to swap the battery for the 11 volt. I don't know what volts, how many volts the uh, CD-ROM drives actually require, so someone could probably tell me that if they know. If you can leave any comments, that would be great. But this one's 11 volts, but obviously a lot more power. Okay, this should go shooting off pretty easy, this one. Let's move the batteries up there. Okay, so that's just a quick rundown on how I mounted a propeller on now. And hope that helps. Thank you for watching. And thank you for giving me that back, Toya.